Good morning. Welcome to Let's Get Growing. We're out in the garden today, and we're going to do something that I have never done before uh, since we've been in this garden, which is, I don't even know how many years now, 30 or so, 35, something like that. Um, I've got an area of the garden we're redoing, and uh, I want to put some hydrangeas in it. Um, we're going to use uh, hydrangea serratus, uh, which is the mountain hydrangea. Uh, it's a lace cap type. It's related to uh, the big leaf hydrangeas, um, but it's a bit hardier. But also, thankfully, um, breeders have come up with uh, reblooming hydrangea serratus uh, that are similar to the uh, uh, macrophylla hydrangeas that we have. So uh, we were uh, out at a garden center yesterday and uh, we uh, saw the, uh, the tough stuff uh, hydrangea serratus from proven winners. Uh, and there's a beautiful one, uh, a new selection of tough stuff uh, with sky blue flowers. It looks beautiful. And uh, I want to get it in the garden. But as many of you know, if you want the blue hydrangeas to be blue, you need to have more or less acidic soil. So uh, we got ourselves a test kit. Uh, and we're going to test our soil. We've never done this since we've been here. Um, we've always sort of assumed by the way things grow that we're on sort of slightly acidic sand uh, primarily. So we're gonna find that out uh, today. So we're using uh, the Luster Leaf Rapid Tests. This is probably one of the easiest ones. It's widely available. Um, you can get it pretty much at any garden center uh, or store that sells gardening supplies. So uh, we're going to do a pH test on the area where I want the hydrangeas. And then we're going to do a soil nutrient test uh, from the wall garden behind me. Uh, that takes a little longer, so we won't have the final results uh, today. We'll post those uh, on Facebook later because um, it takes up to 24 hours uh, for the soil to settle when we put that together. So, But the pH is pretty much uh, instant. So we're going to get that ready to go. I'm going to get this stuff out of the way. I'm going to hand Laura this pH, the, the sheet so we don't lose it. So we're going to do a pH test now. To try to get it as accurate as possible, you don't want to have your hands in the soil. Uh, you don't want to have, you want to keep as few contaminants as possible. So you have the actual just soil sample. So we've got our soil sample here. Now, when you take a soil sample, you don't just scrape a little bit off the surface. Dig down about the depth of the trowel and get that soil that you pick up off the base of the trowel. So here's the soil that we've got from where I want to put the hydrangeas. We've got a little rock there, a little bulb. We'll get rid of that. But we've got a pretty good sample of soil, a bit of bark there. Anything little organic bits of stuff you just want to get rid of. So we've got our soil there. Now, the area that we're planting these hydrangeas uh, we have gardened for quite a few years, so it's had the benefit of composts and leaves and things like that. And even though it's still quite sandy, it's a beautiful brown color. It's actually beautiful soil there uh, from the looks of it. So we're going to do uh, a pH test to see if there's anything we need to do to make sure we have blue hydrangeas when we plant them. So. Um, we're going to go in we'll get rid of some of this stuff. These test kits are pretty simple. They have nitrogen, potassium, uh, potash, the NPK of your fertilizers. That's these ones. 
And then they also give you a nice, easy pH test that you just need to put a bit of soil in and a bit of distilled water. Now, it's important to use distilled water because it's as close to neutral uh, as you can get. Um, neutral is a pH of seven. And distilled water comes in at about uh, over six and a half and to below about seven and a half. So it's really right in there, almost perfectly neutral. So you use distilled water uh, to get sort of the closest reading. If you just use water out of your well or out of your tap, you got all sorts of other minerals in it, uh, you know, uh, water purifier, stuff like that. So distilled water is as clean as you can get. And you can get that at any pharmacy carries distilled water. You're not going to break the bank. A gallon of President's Choice distilled water is two bucks. So cheaper than buying it by the little bottle. You can buy a whole big bottle. Anyway, so to do the pH, they have uh, uh, the easy test. We're going to fill to the uh, soil line at the bottom here. So you don't need much soil. So do that. Okay, so we got to just try to get a little bit of soil just in that. Not the whole thing, right? Just the, just the little side cup. Yeah. Yeah. And why are you wearing gloves? Well, I've got my gloves on because you want to try to keep it as accurate as possible. So, uh, you know, the pH on your hands could be different. There could be something there on your hands that could change the pH. So we're going to try as much as possible to just get a little bit of our soil in there. There we go. And then we break one of these capsules, right? What is that? Correct. We get one of our pH testing capsules. I don't know what this is, but just following the rules. Get our pH capsule here. Of course, plastic, that's impossible. Oh, there we go. And they're color-coded, they're color -coded. so the green is the pH. Then we go on to the other things later. So we'll take the... And we're going to dump this into... Right. Empty. Empty. All right. So we've got our reacting agent in there. And then we're going to get some distilled water and they give us a little, whoops. We're going to fill the distilled water up to the line there. There we go. We're going to put the cap back on. Now we're going to give it a good shake to get everything all mixed up. So, you know, it's most plants, you know, are pretty adaptable and don't need a very specific pH of the soil, but some plants really require it. Hydrangeas will grow perfectly well in acidic soil or less acidic soil, more alkaline soil, but it interestingly enough changes the color of the flowers of the blue ones. If you are growing something like rhododendrons and azaleas, um, scotch heather, uh, blueberries, uh, things like that, you need to know 
that you have acidic soil for those plants to do well. If they don't have acidic soil, they their roots can't take up the nutrients in the soil and they don't do very well. Um, and why I've always sort of thought that we've had slightly acidic soil um, is that we have some rhododendrons and while they hate our dry sandy soil, they seem to stay nice and green. So I've always kind of assumed that we maybe have slightly acidic and sand tends to be slightly acidic. If you were up in the Muskokas, you would have very acidic sand. So um, we're going to find out any moment here. Okay, now you need to let that settle for about a minute. We're going to let it settle. And it's sort of, well, we'll see. It's actually turning a little bit. Green so far, so we'll see what happens there. So the other tests we're going to do are for the NPK. So an NPK test really can help give you an idea of what kind of fertilizers you might need to add to your soil. Um, you know, you can sort of say, uh, well, I'm, you know, I just, I feed it with this and that's what I use. But, you know, sometimes you'll see a plant not doing well for some reason. Um, and you go, you know, why is this plant not doing well? And you can't figure it out. If you do a soil test for the nutrients, the basic nutrients anyway, and, you know, it might give you an answer as to what is going on in the soil a little bit and do give you an idea of what you need to add to your soil to make your plants happy. pH is one thing, but nutrients are another so i'm just picking out some of the roots and bits of stuff out of the soil in um, elevated bed, in raised beds well in raised beds too and it depends what you use like our raised beds uh it'd be interesting to see what the ph is because we use pretty much anything to fill those raised beds we've used soilless mix we've used potting soil we've used some triple mix uh, we throw compost in there, um, you know, and you see some things doing really well. And then you look at another plant beside it and you go, well, why aren't they doing well? And sometimes that pH test or the nutrient test or both can give you an idea of what's going on. Okay, so we've got our cup of soil there. Now, we need to add five cups of water to this. So you can do what you want, the amounts that you want, but it needs to be a one part soil. To five yeah, you don't need to use a cup. We're, we're using, actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump this out so it fits back into this mixer. I'm going to take half of the soil out. So then we only need three cups of water, right? Two and a half cups. Is that right? I get my math right. I garden, I don't do math. So we'll just do this. Let's see what we've got. Bits in there. But we're at about, whoops, a half cup of soil. Okay, we got a half a cup of soil there. So we now mix into two and a half cups. So we'll go up to three cups. There we go. We've got our trowel here that we've used that was more or less green, so we'll use that. Right, so we're going to mix this to stir this up. If we had a closed container, we could give it a shake. 
but we're gonna give it a good stir. And this is why it takes a while to do this test. So we're gonna finish it uh, off camera, and then we'll uh, we'll share the results later, because we might not be able to finish it until tomorrow. For a full minute. Now you need to let it sit so, for 24 hours. So we're gonna just stir that up a little bit more. Be close to a minute there, probably. Probably, probably. All right. So now you can see it's all mixed up. It's cloudy, murky. We now have to let that water and soil settle. So the soil all settles to the bottom. Then we can proceed with the test. So we'll do that off camera and we'll see what we've got. We're going to go back to our pH test again. And we're going to see that it's actually quite green. So even though we were, you know, down into the soil where I thought it might be a bit acidic, we're actually in the neutral to the slightly alkaline. So judging by that, I'd say we're about to seven and a half alkalinity. So if we want our hydrangeas uh, in this area of the garden, we're going to need to do something to lower the pH uh, because if we put them in this, they're going to be pink. And I really, really want them to be blue. So we've got to lower this pH down somewhere down here to around the five and a half uh, area uh, of pH to get it acidic enough to hopefully turn our uh, hydrangeas blue. I mean, they'll grow fine, but they won't be the color we want. So what do we do now? Now that we have this bit of information, then we look for soil acidifiers. Um, the easiest way to acidify the soil is to look for products uh, that are made specifically for that purpose. Um, one of the ones that's the most common one uh, is aluminum sulfate. Now, aluminum sulfate, you'll go into the garden center, you'll see it in a box, it'll have a picture of hydrangeas on it, it'll have a picture of blueberries on it, uh, it might have a rhododendron on the box, um, but that's not really the one you want to use. While it does work, uh, aluminum sulfate can eventually build up the aluminum in the soil, uh, which can be harmful to rhododendrons and things like that. So uh, you don't use the aluminum sulfate the better one to look for is dolomitic sulfur. Dolomitic sulfur is basically just the yellow sulfur uh, in sort of a granular uh, pulverized rock form and adding it to your soil uh, as per the instructions. You probably need to do it a couple of times a year to keep the pH sort of where you want it, but it will work the best. Um, I have seen in stores you can get uh, hydrangea pH balancers. They pH up, pH down. Uh, they could be aluminum sulfate. I'm not sure, but check that on the label. It'll tell you what is the product. But look for dolomitic sulfur, then add that to your soil to lower the pH. If you needed to raise the pH, if you were way down here, uh, in the reds or oranges on your thing on your chart here that you wanted it to be a little higher then you'd look for dolomitic line and add that to your soil uh, it all just depends on what sort of ph level ideally you want to get to um, the rapid test does give you a nice chart so depending on what you're trying to grow or what you're wanting to grow uh, it talks about a lot of different things, fruits, vegetables, things like that. And really, most plants are in that 6 to 7 in the pH, just very slightly acidic. It's kind of ideal for almost anything. Um, so that's what you want to shoot for. Uh, you know, there's a few things that, that like it a little bit more acidic. But if you can get it around 6, 6.5, somewhere in there, you're slightly acidic and 
uh, everything will do, you know, just fine. Um, like I mentioned, that pH level is important because it allows plants to help take up nutrients from the soil when the pH is in the right zone. So it is something important to think about. And that surprised me a little because I was thinking it might be a little bit more acidic, but it definitely isn't. And I'm sure when we water, when we irrigate with our well water, which has quite a lot of uh, lime in it and it's very hard water, uh, the pH probably even goes up a little higher. So uh, we will be uh, treating that garden with some dolomitic sulfur when we plant our hydrangeas and renovate the bed uh, so we can lower the pH. So our water is settling here. We'll leave that till tomorrow. We'll reshoot, uh, not reshoot, but we'll, we'll do the tests. And they're all done in a similar way. And we will report back on the findings of that uh, tomorrow. So you can see the tests are right there, very similar. You just mix in your uh, water, your little packet of chemical agent to make the reaction happen and then just read it off the label there. So you know what you might need to add of your big three uh, this is good soil additives. Five tests so that uh, so you can wash it out, dry the well, and reuse it again in a different area of the garden or a different container. They are, and they can be reused. And they, in the test kits, they give you uh, a number of different capsules so you can do uh, a number of different tests for different parts of the garden because you know, the area where you want to grow your acid loving plants is going to be different from the area you want to grow your vegetables or or your dianthus or something like that, that, that likes a, a little more neutral soil. So um, you can test multiple areas of the garden. You can test the same area before and after treatment to see if you're doing the right thing. So give it a go. It's kind of fun, a little bit uh, surprising. I didn't expect that to, to come up as uh, such a high pH there in the soil. So that was an interesting find today. Do we have any questions today, Laura? Uh, no questions. No questions today. All right. Feels like it's going to be a beautiful day. A day for pressing flowers. Get out and garden. We got our flower press this week from Amazon. So we're going to press some flowers. And uh, we'll talk about that on another show uh, later on. And for that, we'll leave you. Enjoy your gardening week, and we'll see you next time on Let's Get Growing.